the show that tackles the hottest questions. With me today are our four lovely panel members who are going to give their views on each of our topics. So from my left, we have Jackson, a firefighter from Val the Hinge. How are you today, Jackson? I'm good, Erin. How are you? Yes, I'm good. We have Nadia, a model from Dremore. Hi, Erin. How's you? Good. We have Caelan, a social media influencer from Cork. Thank you. How are you? And we have Amy, a student from Belfast. Hi, Erin. So are we all ready to start on our first topic? Yeah, yeah. sure. Great. So our first topic is, are you too posh to get pissed? We asked the public what they thought of the current legal drinking age, and here's what they had to say. We're here in Belfast now to ask the public's opinions on your hot topics. So, should the legal drinking age be lowered, and when did you first start drinking? Uh, um, 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 well, I honestly first started drinking when I was about 16. First drink was about 16, 17. About 32, yeah, I was, before I ever had a drink. <laughs> No, it shouldn't be lowered because it leads to too much antisocial behaviour. Um, I think it should be kept at the age that it is for 18. The legal drinking age should be lowered because then you would probably have 14 year olds in kind of trying to get in. So I think it's a tough one, maybe 17. No, I think the legal age is OK. I don't think it should be lowered, I think it should go up. I didn't actually start drinking until I was about 18. Got there, like it shouldn't be lowered. There's a reason why it is what it is at the minute. So just keep it that, I think. So we'll start off with you, Jackson. Do you think the social class and drinking habits are linked? Um, yes and no. I think there's binge drinking in every class. I think from lower, upper, higher class, it's just binge drinking. But it depends how it's done. You know, if it's done out the back, you know, <laughs> playing croquet. We're in the field. Enjoying <laughs> some time with friends with wine and cheese. Yeah. It's seen as classy. Oh, that's a high lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If it's done out the back of the local dive and there's boys drinking Strongbow all night. Sounds like Mike Henneway here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Keel, when did you first start drinking? I'm um, 14. Okay, so tell us a bit about that. So I just loved it, like every Friday you get home from school, you save up your money from school all week, climb out the window half seven, tell your mum you're going to bed early, and then fall in the window block singing like Rihanna or Abba. <laughs> okay, and do you feel that um, the higher classes as like the the royalties of our generation would do that? Not at all. Oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, like I have a few posh friends that will come out and they're all like, um, like my dad owns a farm and she's lying in the field, dresses up in the air and she's drinking Strongbow. <laughs> it's like, we're all the same. Like we're gonna drink, mm. let's be honest. Fair. I think there's maybe just everybody likes to drink. I think that's what we're getting at Yeah, here. okay. Do you drink yourself, Amy? Um, I, I never drank underage. It, was, it wasn't something I was ever interested in. That makes me sound the You're most boring person in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I would drink the odd time now, um, mm -hmm. I don't drink very much, but I often wonder is that maybe because I wasn't interested in it at a younger age, did that maybe, but still my peers. You See, know, I would be more them. interested in it when I was younger, but now I'm less interested in drinking. Do you think maybe that's from your youth? Yeah, yeah, possibly, because I feel like, what's the point? Everything? Literally, <laughs> what's the point I now? I'm too old and work and stuff, so... Too many responsibilities? Yeah, too many responsibilities. So when I was young, when I didn't have responsibilities, that's when I binge drink. Yeah. I wonder if maybe then in terms of class, maybe binge drinking is more um, acceptable with the yeah. higher classes. If Not acceptable, more oh, common. It's easier. If they don't have to work, you know. It's easier if you're coming from 20 to 22, you're getting into a full-time job, you're trying to earn a living, maybe buy a house. If you don't have money, you have to save. Mm. If you have money, that's not yeah. an issue. Yeah. You you're you're able really to long. drink the whole way through because you don't have to save for a while. Yeah. But then there's also the, you wonder if there's maybe a cultural thing to do with it as well, instead of just class, because you look at like France and stuff where it's a lot more common for like younger kids to drink, you know, when they're a younger age with their families, socially, you know, they're being monitored. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to see if maybe there was a binge drinking thing there yeah. as They well. need to introduce it when they're young though. Yeah. But that's yeah. why people I just love, love binge drinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> I hope I'm getting pissed in the field of 30 as well. <laughs> <laughs> so would you think it's a wee bit maybe easier for, or acceptable for like higher classes to hide it as they do have croquet yeah. events and wine tastings and things like that where it's more acceptable? Would yeah. you agree with like, that? As you say, you could see somebody on their yacht eating cheese, having a nice wee glass of wine. You wouldn't think anything of it if they were 15, 16. Mm -hmm. But if you see somebody upside down in a park somewhere, you know, yeah. <laughs> two That's bottles of fair. vodka sticking out of their bag, you know, <laughs> it's a bit of a difference. It's portrayed different in the media as well. One's portrayed as this is high class social drinking, maybe consuming 20 units. Whereas if you're doing it like this, it's low class and you're, yeah. you're just not up yeah. to standard and it's disgraceful. Well, now that we're all fired up, it's time to move on to our next topic, 
do the bits fit. Did you know that on Facebook now there are 71 gender identities to choose from? What do you think about that? I didn't know there was that many. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Well, I didn't know there were 71. Oh, well, it makes no difference to me. Like, I mean, as long as the person's comfortable in their own skin. Well, no, I didn't don't know that, but I'm, I'm not surprised about it. Someone feels is, you know, up to them. And... Um, I think there's only two genders. It doesn't make a difference. That's their own individual choice and I have no problem with them. You know, everyone says, oh, I identify as an Apache helicopter, but if someone wants to, I don't see how it affects you. It's like, just kind of let people live. <laughs> I think a lot more people should be more aware of the difference between sexual orientation and sexual gender. Whatever you identify as, if you're happy with it, just go with it. And so today's in 19 at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? So, so Keel, we'll start with you this time. Do you think there's an identity crisis within today's society? I think there definitely is a lot of more things you can be. Now, I, personally, I don't agree with it. I feel like it's just became a social media stunt. It's like everyone wants to be something different so that they stand out, whereas they should have stuck to the basics. Mm -hmm. Do you not think, though, that it's lovely now that we have so many boxes that people who maybe feel they didn't fit into the original ones that you know weren't acceptable in society can now find a word that they associate with and other people who they feel close to because they're the same? Yeah, it's definitely different that it gives them like a bigger like perspective on what they can be. But I mean, 71 genders, I thought there was only four. <laughs> I think they do trickle down to the basics. Yeah. But I, you know, like everyone should be allowed to express. Be included. How they feel. It really doesn't so think affect me, sorry. I think there's far too many, and I think it's become a point where everyone can pick what they are. They just, they're, they're whatever they want to be. They're, it's three, four billion people in 10 years who have all different genders, different views. Like, instead of, oh, there's a group of guys walking down the street. Well, it's not a group. There's three pansexuals, one person who identifies a tree, one non-binary, non-gender, female. And it's just, I think, become a fashion sense. It's no longer a how I feel, as Kate Hume said, it's, it's, become, a, it's, yeah, it's become a thing to have. But do you not think that's quite offensive to people who have found some sense of, of being in these words? You know, there's a lot of people struggle with depression because they don't know what they are. And it really doesn't affect me if there's 71 genders. I don't have to remember them all unless somebody tells me one. So the fact that somebody might, you know, finally realise who they are and accept who they are because there's all these words, do you not think it's but, a nice thing for them? 71 is maybe not hard to remember, but what if everyone's allowed to pick their own gender? What if there's seven billion? Everyone on earth has their own gender. Where do you, where do you draw the line? Where do you, where do you stop it? Or does everyone just get to be what they want? I think it's also about what about the people who are misinformed? Like they are like they may not know, and they may have opinions based of obviously they are misinformed, but when they talk to someone who has something like that and the person becomes offended then the person's like why are you so offended because they are they are misinformed but they're like because you're misinformed but it's not their fault but i think i think most people who if you misgender them or whatever most people will say oh actually i don't want to be called that i want to be called this and then it's up to us to take the responsibility yeah. and remember oh well it's just like if somebody changed their name but you just yeah. remember somebody's name change i'm you just going to make a gender Kill him. What's that there? <laughs> be which one of We have 72 be now, what guys. Want to be. <laughs> 72 <laughs> genders. 72. So finally, we'll move on to our last topic of today. Hashtag no filter. Do you think your presence online reflects your self worth, and why? Um. Hey. Um. Well, I would love to say no, but honestly, if I post something on Instagram and it doesn't get any likes, I'm a wee bit devastated. Yeah, if people aren't getting enough self-worth on, or they're not getting enough likes or whatever, they're not getting enough, you know, um, comments on Facebook and Instagram, it does affect them and it's a bit sad. I would say it probably does. It does affect your self-esteem. No, I used to, but I think people look far too much into it nowadays. Personally, no, not at all. Like it doesn't have any real effect on me. I don't know, I don't really, I'm not really fussed about what I get in social media, likes or dislikes or anything like that, they're just... You could be one person online and a completely different person, so I don't think that, that they could have a link. I think it's another thing, you just gotta get a bit of a reality check and, yeah. Do you think your online presence is important and do you feel that you're a different person online? Keelan will come to you, the social media influencer. Definitely, 100%. Like, I think the kind of character I play online it obviously it isn't what I am it's a character played mm -hmm. 
because I look at it as a business. So I get my man boobs out, I shake my bum, that's what I do, but like I'm not gonna go to Yasda and flash my tits. <laughs> it's no one's not gonna, gonna happen. No one's gonna, no one's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. But if it's making me money, I get my tits out every day. <laughs> Fair. Mm. Does, that that affect, fair. does that affect your mental health? Like it must be tough going from character to character like that. Definitely at the start it affected a lot being growing up and like knowing, you know, like when you're younger everything's more sensitive. See now, I don't care the half the world to see my tits. <laughs> They're fabulous. I know they are. And so is my ass. <laughs> Nanny, it will come to you on the other side because mm -hmm. you have a lifestyle blog so you're very mm -hmm. much promoting your life choices. You're not being yeah. a character. Yeah, it's just like a journal, if you'd say. Mm -hmm. but, but if it was... Um, to be a model, like if it was my modeling page, it would be completely different. Different. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to be hypocritical because I know that when I have to change it up and split it into two, it's going to be professional and personal and it will be clearly stated. Mm -hmm. So in business, yes, it's totally different. But in personal, mine isn't, but other people's yeah. oh, could be. I'd love to have a model's mm -hmm. Instagram. I'd definitely make the cut. I'd like <laughs> <laughs> underwear photos right up my streets. <laughs> <laughs> So Jackson, what's your opinion? Do you feel like um, you know your online presence affects your self worth? I, I don't really have an online presence. I'm not I'm not interested in it. It doesn't affect me if yeah. I had one photo online. If there's mm -hmm. a thousand photos of me, it's just not my thing. It's more um, it works for Caelan and it works for Nadia. But in Caelan's sense, he's playing this character, and he knows he's a character, and all his personal kind of friends would know that this is a character. But for his fans or followers, some who are maybe 12, 13 or even younger. It's all right for Caelan to get paid to get his tits out in Asda, but if we Timmy's doing it in his maths class, getting expelled from school, he's not making any money from it. He's mm. not making a career out of so it. So you're and looking at the danger kind of There's the thing. influence, but who are you influencing and are they how, how are they able to deal with that? For yeah. sure that's social media anyway. I, was just yeah. say, I think that's one yeah. of the main problems with social media. Like I can guarantee nobody goes on Instagram just to see photos of my dog, apart from <laughs> me. <laughs> but I mean like the stuff you see on Instagram, you think to yourself, this could be dangerous for, as you say, younger people. You know, if they don't know you're playing a character and they're seeing you do all mm -hmm. these things, you know, maybe uh, not so much worry about getting your tits out NASA, but if it's all things like models who maybe have eating disorders or, you know, glorifying this look that they should all have, do we kids think, oh, well, I have to be like that? They you know, because they see it online. They might mm. get the same adoration that you get, whereas you're the kind of original and everything after that's the... Copy. Yeah. Mm. Timmy gets his tits out in math class. I want credited. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark. I want credit. Okay. Get it, Timmy. Well, that is enough for us today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, our lovely panel. And for yous at home, join us again next week for more Hot Topics. Bye.